American policymakers have a lot of strong feelings about the role of the federal government, especially when it comes to education. The federal government shouldn't be involved at all in education. I'm committed to keep fighting for our nation's public schools. In general, the American right believes that a smaller federal role is good, while the American left generally believes that Washington has a crucial role to play in schooling. But the truth is that in education policy, there's a lot of both good and bad that has come from federal initiatives like No Child Left Behind and The Race to the Top. It's time to rethink federal education policy. President George W. Bush's K-12 legacy was defined by the 2001 No Child Left Behind Act. NCLB radically overhauled Washington's role in schooling and led states and school districts to collect reams of new data on students and teachers. After Bush left office, President Barack Obama further expanded the federal footprint. In early 2009, President Obama pushed for a considerable economic stimulus, including $100 billion for education, a portion of which went to create Obama's signature Race to the Top program. It pushed states to adopt teacher evaluation systems that gauge teacher effectiveness in large part based on reading and math scores. It aggressively encouraged states to adopt more common standards, meaning in practice, the common core state standards and the associated tests. Some of the consequences that followed from all this were not necessarily what reformers had intended. In the early 2000s, Polls suggested that Americans thought all 50 states should use the same standards for reading and math instruction. Common Core, which did just that, was officially launched in 2009 and, with the Obama administration's energetic backing, had been adopted by more than 40 states within a year. And yet, by 2015, most Americans opposed the Common Core. The urge federal officials feel to make a difference can help get things done, but it can also rush policies to fit into tight political timelines, generating lots of problems and popular backlash. NCLB and Race at the Top did deliver some important wins. Today, the data has improved immeasurably due to the data collection that NCLB required, which is why we're hip deep in sophisticated debates about what kinds of schools and programs work best for students. Statewide testing made it possible to link teachers with student outcomes. When the Obama administration pushed to more meaningfully evaluate teachers, states and districts started using sophisticated metrics, rubrics, and evaluation tools that hold the promise of helping researchers and policymakers better understand what distinguishes good instruction. Ironically, these tools even made it possible to determine that the new evaluation systems didn't actually have an effect on how teachers were evaluated. On the whole, even as accountability and teacher quality reforms failed to do much of what they were intended to do, they may yet have a meaningful, beneficial impact in the years to come. So, what do we make of all this? First, Many of the effects, for good and ill, are very different than what policymakers initially intended. Second, the urge to move quickly may ultimately have done more to set back once promising reforms than to advance them. And third, it's a reminder that much of the Bush-Obama legacy may ultimately come down to a revolution in education transparency, which is a far cry from what was once promised, but a valuable legacy nonetheless. Learning from the successes and shortcomings of the Bush-Obama era will be crucial to making savvier school reform choices in the years to come. To learn more about my take on Bush-Obama school reform, check out the link in the description below. Also, let us know what other topics you'd like AEI scholars to cover on Rethink Tank, and be sure to subscribe for more videos and research from AEI.